Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Noah. He offered burnt offerings on the altar. So the key thing there was when worship was done, it was done on an altar. When worship was done, it was done on an altar. An altar is a place where you offer animal sacrifice. So this place I'm standing now is not an altar. Because no animal has been sacrificed here. All these people that keep talking about altar is because they don't even know what an altar is. We don't have altars. We have platform. This is a platform. And the reason why this platform is a bit exalted is because of the gallery. So that the people at the back and the people on the gallery can see me. Otherwise, I don't need it. I can as well stand here and talk to you. Standing here doesn't denoint me. Do you understand? I don't need this except for view. Otherwise, we don't have altars. An altar is a place where you drag your goat. Once every year, you bring it so that the high priest can offer it for your sins. But we already have our goat on an altar. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame that old rugged cross was the altar and our animal was offered there once and for all and that was the end of that altar we don't have altar again so when you hear people say altar versus altar tell them over my head not for me i have no altar versus any altar my altar settled the matter long ago long ago the old account was settled long ago the record clears today that he washed my sins away for the old account was settled long ago so in the old testament worship was offered where on the altar what is the meaning of altar a place of animal sacrifice that's the meaning that's the bible meaning of the word altar where the pastor stands is not the altar it's podium and you don't need podium if there are no people looking for where they can see you well there are things we just assume just like the word rapture Somebody say are you rapturable be rapturable and then when you read the Bible, you won't see the word rapture. It's not there from Genesis to Revelation. There's no word rapture in the Bible. See? And people just use it without knowing what it means. For instance, when you see the word resurrection of the dead in the Bible. Or quicken your mortal body. That is rapture. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in your mortal body that same spirit shall quicken that quickening is what theologians coin as a rapture so christ in you is a rapture except you don't have christ if you have christ inside you you will be raptured rapture means resurrection or mortality swallowed by immortality so once you are born again, you are rapturable. It's not a prayer point. It's your reality in Christ. So it's knowing the right words. And I like using the right words. So when you say rapturable, how does a man become rapturable? The spirit that raised Christ from the dead gave birth to that man. Romans 8, 11. So that makes that man rapturable. Romans 8, 11. So it's good to use the word that the Bible uses and find out what they are used for. For example, it takes a while to unlearn some traditions. 
And some people will never unlearn it for life. You know, it's like the tradition of when we just say, let us pray. Everybody closes his eye. There's no verse in the Bible that says, close your eye when you pray. It's not a verse in the Bible. It's just a tradition. To avoid distraction, we close our eyes. It doesn't mean that if you open your eye and pray, God will not answer. No, God will answer. Whether you close or open, as long as you are concentrated, you are not distracted. So to avoid distraction, we close our eyes. But if you won't be distracted, you open your eyes. Somebody say, how can a man of God be praying with his eyes open? Which verse say the man of God should close his eyes? You see these people, this church, these people, these people, they don't have fear of God. They were all praying. See their eyes were shining like this. Uh -uh, shouldn't we shine our eye? You want to steal our phone? If you are praying in a place where you are not sure for the activity, they open your eye. Pray and live safe. Are you praying for somebody you don't understand the way he's behaving? You open your eye, tell him, close your eye. You can even lay hands on him and check his pockets. To be sure there's nothing inside that can harm you. Haven't you read Watch and Pray? Watch. Glory. So there are times you pray and open your eyes. And there are times you pray and close your eyes. There's no strict rule. Just like the word worship. You know, and, and, and people think worship is a song. It's just our thought. So along the line too, they now created an Old Testament system of church services in the church. Now remember, we have an Old Testament system. And if you observe in most churches, there is an altar. There is choir. All this is borrowed. From the old testament module for us here we don't have choir here because they are on the altar no it is for functionality they are sitting here so that when they sing their voices can travel to where you are that's why their platform is elevated even higher than mine i am standing here so that when i speak and you are sitting you can hear me it's not because it's a special corner. It is as good as where you are. And if there is need, we will remove them and keep them there. They will still sing. In some churches, they even have a construction with a gate. You are sinners. They are holy. And there is a gate where you sinners cannot enter the holy place. Have you seen such churches? Then there's an almighty chair. In fact, let me tell you. In Bible days, they had a big empty chair on that altar. Where God sits. Nobody sits on the chair. It was God's chair. Then they will now have another chair for the priest. For the men of God. Then they lock the gate. And the preacher will stay inside the holy place to preach to you sinners. Outside. Is an Old Testament pattern. When you come to the New Testament, all those things don't exist. Because Christ has made all of us one. And we're all accepted in the beloved. And then in those churches, they give you an impression that anything on this altar is holy and powerful. So because they have already psyched you, when you're coming to the altar, you start feeling one kind. Because you're afraid. You don't know what is there. So when they bring, they say, kneel down, kneel down. You now kneel down, you are so scared. Because what you don't know is bigger than you. But now you know that there's nothing. So you can enter and come out. Because there's nothing there. There's nothing on this altar. The reason why it's like this is because of order. So that when I'm teaching, nobody blocks me. That's why you are cleared. So I can have space to teach. Just for orderliness. There's no mystery. Did you hear what I said? 
there's no mystery all mysteries have been demystified in christ jesus i didn't hear a powerful amen i didn't hear a powerful amen so those things were symbolic but today we don't have them anymore christ has demystified everything in the new testament 